the workforce trademark. And I found all of this stuff in the bottom of the box. I mean, we got a drive latch, have some little plugs, one of the little screw dealy bobbers. We got a external bay cover, a five and a quarter bay cover. And uh, yeah, not good. Welcome to Hardware Asylum. It's not really in my nature to complain and really call people out, but in this instance, I, I felt it necessary. So we have here the Workforce trademarked box. This box literally is probably 40 years old. You can uh, see in the corner, there's some, uh, I don't know, some boxing or boxing or whatever you want to call it. Some original yellowed tape. This is all the stuff that the seller put on here. Some water damage. Oh look, masking tape at the bottom. So I bought a vintage PC off of Macari, I think is the name of the place. It's not eBay, but it works similar to eBay. And this guy was selling a vintage Workforce 386 PC. It comes in original box and you get a keyboard, a Mitsumi uh, 101, 102 Model R. I don't think I've ever had one of these before, but comes with the PC AT style plug on the end. And inside we get a keyboard cover sufficiently yellowed and a sufficiently yellowed uh, keyboard. So, you know, this had seen some work, but I, ironically, I have a keyboard really similar to that. Down here, this is a, an HP, it's a PS2 one. This is what I use for overclocking. It came with a serial mouse and it's the, the ball style, so it's got a little ball down here. Uh, fortunately, uh, that button works, that button works. This one, uh, yeah, that one's dead. So somebody was doing a lot of first person shooters with this. Oh. However, what really annoyed me was the fact that the seller listed this vintage PC as it came with the original box. I'm like, oh, hey, the original box. That may be a little bit of history. Chances are this was a like an estate sale and this was just down in somebody's basement for a really long time. It would have, you know, the water stains and stuff like that. And somebody had the computer, packed it away in the original box. I mean, a lot of people did that. Well, and inside we have the original packaging. This is just kind of like some hard sell foam stuff. It had the plastic that went over top of the case. And we have another side, a couple of little blocks here and there. You know, it seems good, right? Well, back in maybe 1991. But, uh, you know, after 40 some years, you don't ship something in a box that's this old and already damaged. I mean, this was coming via UPS. If you know anything about UPS, or FedEx or anybody for that matter, when they see a box that is obviously shoddy, they don't bother taking any care of it. It stands out. So at that point, you know, they'll start kicking it. They'll uh, play hockey with it. They'll do this sort of stuff. And as it turns out inside, this was all the PC was packed in. And, uh, and under, so I go and pull it out and uh, you know, this shell looks fine. But uh, then I started hearing some rattling. So let's, uh, let's take a look. So inside the box, we have, uh, we got this. Pan down to get a better look here. But uh, yeah, it was, this is a standard mini, mini tower, AT style. We have the, the one plug down here, a bunch of expansion slots. Power supply on top, that was what was big back then. And in the front, we have a sufficiently yellowed front panel from bezel. And uh, yeah, it fell off. 
Somehow during shipping, this came loose. It disconnected all of the wires. This is what controls the switch on the front. The bezels on these old cases were attached via these pins and they just screwed into the case right here. Well, all of them that had a screw attached snapped off. So this bezel is basically broken. And as you'll notice, there was a five and a quarter drive there. Well, this is where the bezel went and it even popped off the latch. And I don't know if you know, but there's, it takes a lot of effort to pull these off. And then this is attached with a screw about right there and it kind of snapped off in that region. And then we have our three and a half inch drive. It didn't seem like it was mounted very well. There's only one screw in there. The eject button is bent quite well. And uh, like the other, the bezel came off. And at this point, we have a couple of tabs there. This tab is the one that's broken. And that one's not so much. Uh, this plastic piece I have yet to find. I'm not sure exactly where it is. And then we have our expansion external bay covers, which I needed this one for the other case that I'll be showing you in a different video, but I don't necessarily need this one. After I got this unpacked, I sat down and at first I was angry. I mean, you get, uh, you buy something, you pay good money for something and you expect a little bit of care to be taken when it's shipped, when packaged. But you really can't trust that the person shipping it agrees with you that they got a good deal on something or that they really understand that their reputation is on the line if something shows up damaged. When you pack something, put it in a good box, put some foam around it. This would have actually shown up in one piece had the seller actually maybe put some paper in the box or put paper in the box and then that box in another box. I mean, you don't sell something with the original box with the intent of shipping it in the original box. Maybe the person's buying it wants it because it has the original box. After a long thought, I decided nothing in here is beyond fixing. With the bezel being yellowed, we could do what they call the retro bright, you know, basically bleach the, the plastic. The tabs that came off, a little bit of epoxy, we'll put those back on so we could reattach this. These drive drives here, they're not impossible to find. I have several of them in my collection, so those can be replaced. That's not a big deal. And really, the reason that I bought this was for the chassis. I want the chassis for a future project. I needed the mini tower version of it. These would normally go for a couple hundred dollars on eBay. So aside from it showing up broken and me being really upset, it's not in that bad a shape. So I thought, why don't we just tear this apart, strip it down, take a look inside and see what's in there and uh, decide what to do next. First though, I would like to see if this thing will even fire up. So first thing I gotta do is reconnect these guys to the switch. And I think it's white on the left and black on the right. So we'll get that done and we'll get it hooked up to the PC monitor here and see what happens. I will admit though that this case, aside from it showing up broken and a little yellowed, is in really good shape. I mean, normally when you remove these screws from the side, you can see a whole bunch of paint that's gone from the, the frame here. But uh, in this case, it's not. There's just a few little light scratches. All right, so inside, We'll take a closer look inside, but basically we got hard drive, floppy drive, floppy drive, video card modem, IO card, nicely wrapped cable. You gotta love these when they came from the factory that way. And this big bundle of wires, which connects all of the front panel pieces. So we did this so we can get access, plug in the power switch. Okay, 
power. Power one. All right, so we have power available. We're going to try a bit of a known quantity here. So I'll pick my HP keyboard. And a handy damn D adapter. Oh, we got uh, we got something going on here. Hard drive powered up. We do not have a picture. And honestly, I'm not terribly surprised. Ooh, BP. Four, five. Six, seven, yeah, we got, oh, that's fun. I'm sure those beep codes mean something. All right, let's see. Let's get you a better vantage point here. Processor, we have a Cirrix 486. Ooh, no, we have a Cirrix 487 DLC, which means we might have a 486 SL or SX or something. We have an empty socket there. Video card, modem, I.O. card. Those correspond to what's on the back. Full two banks of 30-pin SIM memory. And a quarter floppy, and our hard drive, which turns out to be a Maxter brand. So I'm really curious. Let's pull out some of the cards, get some of this gunk out of the way, and we'll take a closer look at the motherboard. So there's our level two cache. Memory, processor slots, sockets. And there's our CPU. So we have a 386DX40. Which ironically is using a 487 DLC math coprocessor. I'm not sure if that actually works, but you know, maybe it does. But here is my damaged workforce 386. Check back soon to find out what we're going to do with this guy. So tearing into this a little bit further, I found the reason for the beep codes. Seven beep codes is motherboard error. And this is why. We have our CMOS battery that after many, many years of not being used has exploded. And it's spread to the power pins here, to the socket here, and most likely to the circuits underneath the board as well. So this would damage the power circuit there and it's just not going to get power to where it needs to go. So the quick fix would be to replace this motherboard. But I think I have a better idea.